way long ago. I said, no, you can create domain by domain models. And when you know, when either user says that I'm interested in this, or by automatic classification, you know that a uh, user is interested you know, uh, uh, in this particular domain, you can say there is, in this domain I can give you more detailed information. You can build an ontology or domain model. Well, just recently Google bought MetaWeb, which is a company which uh, you know, uh, created Freebase. And that is a huge uh, you know, uh, entity base. And that is a form of ontology. Same thing happened, uh, Yahoo, uh, our Venbo um, um, is actually working on Yahoo on the same thing. So, um, uh, anyway, that, this is a, a kind of bit of a side and uh, something of interest, but so you can do, all, you know, this kind of stuff you can do. Now, what happens is that uh, if you just do France Telecom and text mapping, what you'll see is you'll have different behavior, let's say on France Telecom, if you do a search on Google versus if you do finance.google.com. Why? Because on finance.google.com or uh, on finance.yahoo.com, they are using the domain specific knowledge. Right? I hope this is making sense. So you can see that you can enhance all these things. And topic continues. This is automatic, uh, you know, automatic classification from you know saying, oh, this continues, this continues. This. Yeah. So the different ways you create metadata. I'll call this semantic, 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 structure map to semantic to the extent because I know it's not just class <coughs> telecom as a uh, as a name, but it's a company name. That's why this structure map is semantic. This is uh, uh, most likely syntactic or uh, structure, and this is uh, this is syntactic source. Although, unless you take a meaning of I syndicate, you can call you can arguably you can argue call you know stretch and call it semantic, but broadly it is simply whatever that is is put it here. See what happens. Here, it so happens that um, this is a video, and there is automatic text to uh, uh, automatic uh, you know voice to text conversion. So I have the text. This old right year two thousand. You can see this. The interesting thing is that even though it is two thousand, even today, no company is doing that in last year. I uh, you know I, I those of you who are interested in becoming entrepreneur, I'll discuss with you about the pros and cons. Um, my company still survives. Uh, I don't own it anymore, um, but it got. Uh, I, you know, I had to kind of sell it out to a customer, and that's because the bubble burst in uh, you know 2000. So we could not raise the like, second round of money and all that stuff. But we had very strong technology. The company still survived because the technology somebody acquired after you know. But um, um, uh, the other thing was that there was, we, we came out as a critical point of time in the history of evolution of internet. One of the most important uh, things that has happened on the internet or web is monetization, particularly advertisement. <coughs> Majority of the company, how do they make money on the internet? Or if they are so called internet or web company, how do they make money? Vast majority of them make money by advertisement. Otherwise they have to do uh, e-commerce. Right? So, uh, with this, uh, it so happened that in '99, no venture capital uh, company was willing to um, accept advertisement as a valid business model. <coughs> I knew it. I thought it would work. We had technology. We actually had a patent also on that. But it, um, uh, but you know, those VCs are also herd mentality. They are. Um, um, 
actually my partner, my co-founder, uh, uh, Ajay Chopra, is partner now, venture partner for a billion dollar venture fund. But, uh, and at that point he was also chairman of a public company. But, um, you know, you couldn't convince them. So how would you make money? You can build a very beautiful search engine, uh, search engine like this. I'll show you what it looked look like. But you can't make money, then nobody will give money, right? So um, it then was in 2004, when Google first showed revenue from advertisement. And uh, then everybody jumped in. Oh yes, you can make money with advertisement. But that critical time when we needed to, so then what we had to do is to make our company and take, technology can have a lot of uses like this. So we made our company enterprise centric. So today, um, you know, so this Tali became Voket, Voket became uh, Symagix, Symagix became Fortent, and Fortent was acquired by Nice. So you can see, this is, uh, you know, uh, Actimize and, and, and this thing. So this is Nice, Actimize, and Fortent, the technology they have, this, this technology is what we generated, created. <laughs> Actually, we had a, a Citibank as a customer in 2003 or so for the same application. Now it is deployed worldwide on very, very large, uh, uh, you know, uh, companies. So anyway, the technology I'm talking about is fairly real world, highly researchy, research based but very real world. If anybody wants to know more about it, there's a patent on that that describes in great detail. I'll be happy to. Uh, show it where it is. So now what happens is that from this text I create metadata. So you see this here is automatic classification and I say that for uh, this document highest and this is normalized score so the highest score is put 100 percent highest uh, you know probability is that this is a politics related score. These are all the domains. You see, these are category or domains. Shows you the kind of domains we are at that point, right? And then, because it is politics, I look for specific things. So I look for, I, I found these people, and I found, um, you know, the roles. So I found Hillary Clinton at that point. She was first lady. I found some locations and so on and so forth. So these are all semantic metadata, you see? <coughs> here, there's another document. You can see here from the, in the back. <coughs> and here, automatic classification got you baseball. Because it's baseball, I focused on finding, you know, taking these kind of things. You see all these names? And I match with the knowledge base I had of baseball personalities and I found them. I found the sport person or coach or whatever I would have found them. So this is all semantic metadata. Unquestionably. Here is another document. This is a product literature. In this case I found the category to be business and within the business I found many other things like stock exchange, company name, company executive, John Chambers, he still is, Cisco CEO. Right? Now this is a very interesting one and it's rather complex. So the year we had written a, an extractor for BBC News. And the extractor knew you had to do deep web crawling. So you had all these categories here. You see here, I mean, like you saw the BBC News. So they have, see, they have changed the, um, how, you know, you can see how BBC News looked like in 2000. And now we just saw this in the BBC News, right? You saw that they have different, uh, 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 you know, look and feel. But anyway, uh, they had a lot of geographic coverage here. And then here you can see that there is a particular news story. 
Now, it takes a lot of work actually, not simple, to get this page and then strip off this page of all this other junk here. And know that this page was in this particular part of the category, it was, it was the page under Europe. You see here Europe? It was page under Europe. News under Europe. Here, then, we, our extractor, so first of all, you need to have a um, uh, site specific crawling. So now it knows it is a Europe page for sure. It has that context. That means whatever my knowledge, ba whatever knowledge base I have about Europe, I can apply. But I should not apply American knowledge, uh, US knowledge. If the same pers person by the same name <coughs> happens to be in Europe and US, <coughs> this one will assume that the person I found is the one who is in Europe. Right? Now this is called semantic disambiguation. Very important thing. <coughs> yes? So I'm assuming that's the same, the same situation with language then? It, you may uh, have a language identifier and then you have to do language translation or language specific extraction and then you do this kind of stuff. But so our, we had not built the system with dealing with language. Today, uh, uh, in our center, we have pretty good work on that. Uh, Sojun Wang works on language translation. But we are only working with English now. And, um, and then, then uh, uh, you have to, then you get this part. Then you see the structure. You can see that you, you are in world Europe. So I know that anyway. Then you see the date here. Then you see story title. Then there may be an image. If there is image, there is a uh, caption. It may not be. Someone also is image. Some stories are image here. So you you know you analyze this tech, this particular part of the page and find the image and its uh, component here. This is its component and make it a separate object and then take the textual part and make it a separate object. Then you analyze that. That object has all this, uh, you know, pretty much then you have all the paragraphs. Then you can see here that there is a use of word, uh, um, you know, uh, Vitek uh, Kostunika, oh, 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 sorry, Vaislav Kostunika and then Slobodan Milosevic. So the point here would be that this system will find Oh, the other thing is that it will find Belgrade. You see, it's just find Belgrade is here. So it found Belgrade, but in addition to Belgrade, it says Belgrade, Yugoslavia, this is before the division, and Europe. This will look very simple. But what happened if you had um, uh, London? London can be in, uh, uh, you know, London, Ohio, or London, UK. Obviously, and there are many Londoners out there. There are 13 Springfield out there, at least. Which one? Which country? Which, which state? That would require the context. That is the semantics. Here it was not that hard. Because we know we are part of Europe. So obviously, you know, looking at the database, Belgrade, where in the Europe? And it says in the database, Belgrade is in Yugoslavia. and in, in, So we put that up, right? What would have happened if it only mentioned Milosevic and not Slobodan Milosevic? Even then our system would know, because I know the location, and because now we have a database of all the, uh, you know, major politicians in, in, in the world and in Europe for, uh, in also, so I would be able to match it and while there are probably 1,000 Milosevic, uh, 10,000 Milosevic in Yugoslavia, but if it said President Milosevic, then it is very clear. Because Slobodan Milovic will be named with role president Yugoslavia. With that, I can easily make inference and say, I found President Milosevic. And I say, you know, that, that is the exact person I found. You see? All the person there are a lot of other things that are happening here. But then where are the rules that, that define that a president um, should have more emphasis in your search than, say, just some normal citizen or some... Some uh, there are two, two ways you can do that. Uh, one is the, simply by the construction of your knowledge base, because typically your knowledge base uh, would be <coughs> things that are really you know important. Say, th so think about the following: um, the day before um, uh, uh, the Fort Hood bomber, uh, sorry, not bomber, the, the shooter, uh, actually um, 
uh, you know, did the act that he did, he would not be in any database, uh, uh, general database. He may have been in some very esoteric somewhere. But once he's done it, he's part of, uh, you know, a database of person that you are aware of. Mm -hmm. So what happens here is that there is a, um, you know, uh, constant process. Now, uh, in, in, you know, uh, first of all, there is an explicit um, uh, human directed design of schema. Um, in HPCO, you are doing that by theoretically, by things like user, by Wikipedia Infobox. But in most other ontology development, for example, in PLO, PEO, and all the things in our other thing, uh, people like Satya and Preeti are manually creating those things, right? So here we would create our uh, schema manually, but then we will populate. So, but schema would have 50 classes, something like that. <coughs> That's possible to do. I had actually a music major from University of Georgia. I, you know, I was professor there, right? So I. Half of the people I had for my company, I was a big believer in getting my students to work, you know, you know, when they graduated. So half my employees were my former students, or, you know, in, the, in my lab or center. And that, and in fact, you know, at least one of them still works, works there. He was employee number one. Yeah, he was, David Avant was my employee number one. I hired him on September 1, 1999. He's still employed in this company. After six acquisitions and merger. Anyway, but this guy, uh, but, but uh, so, so, so uh, what we did, which was very, really, I think, smart in the, those period of time is that we would design the schema manually. And as I said, yeah, I, I, Mark Fisher was a music major. He, we just had a tool, just like you use um, Pot Protogy and things like that. So we designed the schema, ontology schema like that. But then we would extract the knowledge automatically from variety of high quality data sources. Like a database, typically, or like um, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I, can, I can show you how you do that. For example, um, you can go to a public website which will list all the stock uh, lists being traded on a stock market. So you know what page has list that listed there, or how do you formulate a query against that, and get the results and populate the thing. But there was a pretty now. This is the kind of thing uh, that even today. People have not mastered that well. And people are using alternative strategies. So, in effect, what the knowledge base we built is very similar to web of objects that Venbo is building for Yahoo. Same purpose. He, he is, if you, if you, uh, you can talk to him, he'll explain. He is uh, working on building web of objects for movie domain. And he has to do some MIGUR. And that is his, th that's the paper he's writing on. Anyway, so the, the little different strategies and all that, so, so and so forth, but we were able to build pretty substantial knowledge base and we were able to you know, keep it maintained up to date. We, here, is, here is a very interesting rule. So uh, let's talk about uh, an example most of you will understand. Uh, uh, let's say NFL, Nest, uh, so Nest, National Football League, and that um, uh, I want to keep, in, keep, keep a knowledge base of all the teams. Within each team, you have coach and you have players, and your players have a particular position. And um, so there's a roster. So I want to have all of them in my knowledge base, right? But of course, that can change, right? Coach can be fired, you know, players injured, and all this stuff. But there is a heuristic you can apply, rule of thumb, saying it doesn't happen too often. So far as I, I do it once a month, I'm reasonably up to date. And I certainly need to do every time before the season starts because there's a major change after all the people you have you know, uh, recruited and all that, then everything has changed. That's the major one. And then you'll have small changes occurring a little bit here and there. But you don't have to check every day. Right? So that way, occasionally I'll check my high quality source information and populate my ontology. Right? So that's how I, I would create that. And uh, there's a lot more to it, but Okay, so now let's leave it at that today. I think we have probably used up our um, time more than used up. And, and we'll continue this, okay? But what I'd like you to do is while I continue this and have other discussions later on, what uh, you should do is, uh, in fact, I'll see these are the tools that we had. I'll, I'll show you the tools that we had and how they work uh, to do that. 
but you should uh, read the reading material, those two art three articles that I have, uh, or in chapters you have, before next class.